show your support. Like, share and subscribe. Right, well, it's a Sunday and we are recording... On, a on the day, yeah, on the day this will be so out. So organised. We are so organised. We haven't had to randomly look after dogs and things. Yeah, we haven't changed all our plans around. That's fine. No, it's all good. Oh well, how are you anyway? So, you sound awake. I'm yeah, so sleepy. Yeah, go go going to Oxford and then not getting in until nearly three in the morning. Uh, yeah, it's not the best idea in the world. <laughs> Worth it though, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, no, it was good because it was like the last show of my friend's uh, professional tour, the first professional tour he's done since he's graduated. So, oh okay, it was good. was was a very good show. It's just so far away. <laughs> well, you were in the old Greece when uh, he was here, I think. Was that what you were saying? Uh, yes, yeah, I, I would have Did seen. Did you go on holiday? I can't remember. <laughs> Oh yeah, it. Unfortunately, it feels like I haven't been. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're back and working. <laughs> yeah, it's only been two weeks. I'm like, oh, already counting down the weeks for the next one, which <laughs> thankfully is only a few weeks away. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Well, I'm now going to look at my calendar. Let's have a quick look. I'm going to say you you go off on a jolly soon, don't you? One, two. Yeah. Well. The day of the next podcast release is going to be when we're filming our Mario Kart through the years. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and yeah, the well hyped up. <laughs> yeah. Coming soon Mario Kart series, which I hope you're all going to watch. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to be mad at you, aren't I? Oh yeah, I'm supposed to be annoyed. Yeah. Oh, girl. <laughs> there you go, sat done. <laughs> that is one thing I've been thinking of. We've been doing these very much tongue in cheek fun videos. And then when it gets to the recording, it'll be like, "Hello, everyone! Yeah, we're all hi. happy. <laughs> we're we're here doing a joint video thing. Yeah, yes, yeah. We're all having lots of fun. <laughs> we're not punching each other or being angry. No, or sticking pins in chairs. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I did have the idea of maybe doing one little episode of that as a bonus, where we were both, you know, in that sort of persona, but. I've, just thought, I don't think I could keep that up, <laughs> to be honest, for 15 minutes no. of, a, you know, of a Grand Prix or whatever we're doing. I I think I'd be laughing too much. Yeah. But if people want to see it, do let us know. Maybe we'll incorporate that. If you, we'll you want to see us actually angry with each other. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Mario Kart is the perfect game for that. Mm. Just give us any blue shells. Not in the first one. Oh, no, not in the first one. No blue shells not. in that first one. No. Which, by may I say, is one of the most pointless weapons ever. What, blue shell. Yeah, if well to receive and to get hit. But if you're sixth and you get a blue shell, you're like, oh great, I can knock out first. Why do I want that? Well, it's not just first though, is it? Because it knocks out fifth and fourth and third. So if you're quite close to them, yeah, the others well, are just collateral damage. Yeah, I mean the one on the Wii, it flies and then it hits first. And I, I always thought, as a person, sometimes being in fifth and sixth, because it happens. You know, like getting a blue shell and then it fires off and hits first. And I'm like, well, great. How does that help me right now? Does it only hit first on that game then? I believe so. Oh, because like the the N64 one. Correct me if I'm wrong here, people. But I'm pretty sure that hits all the people. Yeah. Because it flies I like a normal so. shell, like not with wings flying, but it kind of fires yeah. across the floor like a normal shell. If you are in sixth, it will hit fifth. Go through them and hit fourth. Go through them and carry on till it gets to first place. Yeah, that's what I thought it did. Yeah, I believe it may well do. I've I got just think no, the Wii's different. And I've got no way. idea what it does in Double Dash or even if it's in Double Dash. I've only <clears> owned <throat> I've only owned that game for pff, well over sort of six seven years and barely played it. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, I, I don't actually know. I haven't played that since I was a, a Wii boy. In a game, school. a GameCube boy. Yeah. Hey. Like <laughs> and I know it's not in the first one, and the first one's the best one. So. The SNES one. Yeah, the the best one. <laughs> Is that without question? Definitively the best one. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah well yeah. 
It's it's yeah. There are so many weapons. I like it's like oh, in the Switch one, getting a coin as a weapon. I'm like, oh, go away. Oh yeah, you don't get that in the earlier ones. I don't think. No, but at least you get to choose two weapons at once. Oh, do you? What, on the, the Switch? Switch. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know like you a... sometimes do on some of the newer ones if there's a double question mark. Yeah. Because it's like a you can have one and then you can get another one for like backup for when you use that one sort of thing. It's in storage. Mm. It's good. It's helpful. Yeah, it'll be fun. Watch it us now in the whole series not know what we're doing, be really bad and finish 8th yeah. and 7th. Yeah, in every none of us will win. Yeah, no, that's fine. And then we'll get partners in for something and they'll make us look stupid. Yeah, basically. Yep. That's about right. Cool. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> After all this hype. <laughs> yes. After all this hype, nah, we won't be that good. <laughs> but yeah, no, anyway, Tulip, yes. The next podcast is on day of recording, so that'll be good. Hmm. Um, and then I'm off for a week. Ah. So episode one quite possibly will be around the time I'm coming back. Episode one, what of the 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 thingy, of the yeah. Mario, uh, maybe, maybe. But the first one will be on my channel anyway, so you haven't got exactly, to worry about yeah. that. So I should just about be fine. Yeah, it's all good. But look forward to it, people. It's, it is genuinely going to be fun. We've been <laughs> look planning forward this to rig. it. We demand you to look forward to it. <laughs> we command you. Yeah. As look kings forward. of well, nothing really, sod all. We command you. <laughs> As kings of two tiny YouTube channels, we demand you to enjoy it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, did you want to on. kick off today, Mister S- Mister British Guy? I was going to say Mister Sir. That didn't Mr. make sense. <laughs> Mister Sir. Sir Mister. Yes. Sir okay. Mister. <laughs> if if I may. While you've yeah, go for thrown it, that my way. Yeah. Neither uh, of us have any idea what we're going to talk about today, so this is actually going to be quite fun. Oh yeah, this is this is going. Yeah, normally we kind of sort of prep each other a bit. Yeah. Hopefully by the the kind of we haven't picked the same thing just on the wings of chance. <laughs> I hope not. No. Um, mine is. I was going to do a kind of a full video on these games because. Uh, they were quite fun, but then I looked at my schedule and realised that I don't have time for that, so oh, okay. I thought I'd chat about them with you today. Um, Fair and enough. what I might do is do a proper video on one or two of them later on, because they're all demos, what I'm going to be talking about, and they're all right. from um, Ky- Kyrosoft? Right, Kyrosoft? Okay. K-A-I-R-O Soft. And right, okay. they're all kind of um, there's about eight of them, and I downloaded them and kind of played about with them a bit on holiday, like quickly in between, um, like getting ready to go out for dinner or like when we were on the plane coming home, things like that. And they're kind of um, little sort of adventure demo things based okay. upon various different things. So there's one like where you're running a restaurant. And you've got a, it. And that one kind of plays almost like Overcooked, where you've got to be cooking all the foods and serving ah, all the okay. customers. But it's kind of less hands-on than that. It's more sort of managerial, if you like. It's it's oh, okay. sort of planning the the restaurant, planning the menu, leveling up your cooks and staff to do sort of better meals and things like that. Um, and there's like football manager meets theme hospital. Kind of. Well, you say football. There is a football one. Oh, okay. As well. Um, and not only do you have to kind of, in like a football manager, obviously buy and sell players and plan your um, squad and things, but in in this game, you even have to kind of plan their training schedules and and what tournaments you're going to be playing in and things, and. All the demos that we, that they have, um, they're sort of on a limited time. So there's in-game months and years, and each oh, one okay. play you play for, depending on what it is, sort of two years of in-game time. So everything is available to you that would be available to you in the actual game. Um, right, but okay. then once you get to the timeout thing, it basically says, why don't you buy the actual full thing of the game? <laughs> Um, Unless when you go, nah, I'm alright. Well, there's a couple that have actually piqued my interest because I I played 
the football, I found the football one first and was like, oh, this is quite good. And then they actually advertise themselves and say, if you do a search for us, in the, this is all on the Switch, by the way. Um, right, okay. Hence me being able to play it a little bit while I was on holiday. Um, the Switch that actually does Switch. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that <Yeah>. one. <laughs> another topic the for another day. Um, yeah, they, they sort of advertise themselves at the end. They're like, if you enjoyed this one, why don't you kind of search for us on the e-store and find all the other ones? So I did. Um, there's a couple of town-based ones where you, right, you're kind of having to almost SimCity style build towns and... Um, random people sort of turn up and work there and live there and and generate money for your town but my absolute favorite one is probably the best one and it makes sense as to why it's the best one because it was made by a game development company it's a game development story mode oh right <laughs> you actually you start off in what seems like kind of the late 80s with um like really basic consoles that yeah. you can buy licenses for. You then hire like programmers and artists and sound engineers and have them working on and developing various different games from different genres. Right. Yeah. That sounds fairly interesting. It actually. is pretty cool to be honest. That was I think the second or third one. Um I think I played the the football one, then the restaurant one, and then this one. And I played this one a good few times actually, because obviously the in game time is, is quite limited it, yeah. it, it you kind of get a taste for it and it runs out of time annoyingly um but yeah and every now and then they'll release sort of new consoles that you can buy licenses for so you okay. kind of want to make sure that you've got enough money to buy the licenses for them so that you're able to build games for them because if you keep building games on the older systems you don't sell as many copies and the idea is to get a best selling game basically Right, okay. behind it because that then generates a lot more hype um, for people knowing your company and obviously okay. the more people that know your company the easier it is for you to be selling games to begin with yeah yeah okay it's, it's so pretty suppose, damn cool yeah, i suppose that's going to be the most accurate game you'll ever play in your life if it's <laughs> well yeah it's, it's made by the guys yeah. that would actually make it. it yeah <laughs> yeah that sounds quite interesting yeah it? it's pretty cool it's called game dev story mode game dev story mode yeah i'm going to genuinely write that down on a post-it note okay, okay. conveniently next to me yeah there is yeah <laughs> i'm trying to how much is it actually i don't think it i've got access to it i think it's about roughly uh on the e-store at least when i last looked unless it's now on an offer about eight pounds Oh, okay. Oh, that's not too bad. So it's actually. not stupidly expensive. But the only thing that's a bit annoying that I thought they would do, but they don't, is do like a bundle pack for all of these games. Yeah. Because there's about eight different demos. Right, okay. And there's, and a, cu there's a couple of their games. Them. Yeah, there's a couple of their games that there's no demos for. Oh, okay. But they do exist. I think there's about 12 games in total, but they don't do a bundle for all of them for like. Thirty pounds or forty pounds or whatever. So yeah. if you bought okay. each individual one, it would be quite pricey. You're looking at kind of close to a hundred pounds. Yeah, that sounds quite annoying. Yeah, but to be honest, some of them are like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay then. Yeah. So that was well, that, that was kind of would... that was kind of my 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 thing to bring. The, I think the best thing. Or the, one of the best things in there was some of the they do like press release type things for the new consoles that are coming out. Yeah. So you get the Senga, not the Sega, the Sen oh. the Senga. Um, oh, what was it called instead of a Genesis? Um, oh, I can't remember. I can't remember what it was called. But yeah, it was basically a a, a, a mock version of that, and then you get the um, the. I Tendo, or Intendo, I think it was called. Um, you get the Game Kid. The Game Kid. <laughs> the Game Kid. Yeah, got to love. That's great. Getting a license for the Game Kid. So yeah, it's very kind of tongue in cheek. <laughs> game Kid. Sorry. Yeah, very <laughs> ridiculous. But yeah, really, really good fun. And you, yeah, the the kind of better uh, members of staff you've got to do sort of better programming or better music or whatever kind of. 
each individual section of a game you get points for over the development time. Um, oh, right. And okay. the idea is to score as high as possible in those various different sections. Um, and then you even get the, the bug killing phase as well because bugs really? just kind of a, a arrive in the game as you're playing and you can right. you can do a Bethesda and just release it full of bugs if you like to get it out <laughs> quicker, you actually can um, oh, okay. they don't call it doing a Bethesda, that's just me or you yeah. can you know actually develop a game properly and uh, get rid of all of those but obviously that takes more time to yes, do I can only imagine that takes more time yeah so yeah, it's pretty cool to be honest. It's it's kind of a a basic tongue in cheek way of looking at game development, but kind of with enough elements of oh okay, that's actually a thing. That's quite cool. Okay. So, yeah. That would be that that does sound fairly interesting. I'm fr- uh, did um you said game dev story mode has a demo? Yeah, that one's definitely yeah. got a demo. Yes, because I I played it about four times. Okay. <laughs> Has it got easier each time? Um, a little bit. I've kind of been able to pre-plan what I spend money on. Um, right, okay. Knowing what's coming up. So, okay. I, I guess that's the same with any game, though. If you know what's coming up, you pre-plan for it, regardless of what kind of game it is. You kind of think, oh, I'm not going to do this yet, because I know that in another level's time or another section's time this happens so I'll wait until then yeah or I'll yeah. do this now because that preps me for what happens later on so yeah right okay then well it does sound interesting I'm probably going to give that a go actually yeah the, the, gonna... I think that one of the main reasons why that's kind of more favourable for me as well not just the content because the the, the um, restaurant one was pretty good as well to be honest and the football one probably the three best ones they give yeah. you the most control as to how you can kind of generate and spend money the other okay. ones are a bit more kind of you have to leave it to the fates of the game to just right, do okay. things for you and you're kind of almost watching a simulator yeah. so there's a lot of different levels of involvement and they don't involve you as much Okay. Like there's a school one where you're running a private school and the idea is to get as many pupils as possible and it's a bit like, well you do a couple of things at the beginning because the game tells you and then you kind of sit and watch yeah, and don't really do much. Oh right. So, but yeah. So you get con- oh, okay, so you get some control. and Yeah, you get a lot more control over what okay. your choices are on, on these sorts of things and like the football one with the training and, and buying and selling players and what tournaments you're going to enter yourself into as a kind of amateur non-league team oh, okay. to become like one of the best teams in the country. They kind of give you a lot more control. Do they give you money to spend? Uh, on players? <laughs> well, what, on, what, in-game money? or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. plenty oh, of okay. money. I, want, I wonder what that's like. What, having having money to buy players, yeah. Yeah, I'm you, a Newcastle fan. I have yeah. absolutely no idea what that is. Well, you're talking to an <laughs> Arsenal fan. We don't have much idea of it either. <laughs> oh, that sounds interesting. I yeah. would absolutely give that a go when Ky- I have a moment. Cairo soft, they all are. So, I mean, Cairo different soft. people are going to have different preferences. Some people might really like the town buildy ones. Um, yeah. They were okay, but as I say, some of them just have less involvement for you and if you can't really dictate how and when you're spending money and making money it kind of defeats the point of the game from my perspective yeah. anyway so yeah okay well I shall probably be giving it a go at some point this week actually mm. I'll at least download some demos oh yeah yeah I mean there, there's, there's enough of, of the demos to try them out and yeah delete the ones you don't like really yeah All right well I shall give that a go yeah. There's just as long as you know they're not too easy. No, no. There's enough. There's enough kind of in, involvement um, for you to screw it up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. That's all right. Because <laughs> <laughs> I found recently that games are, I believe, getting easier. Oh, is this a segue, sir? It could well be. Ah. <laughs> segue. What's that um, coming over the hill? Is it a segue? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I don't just mean. One of the stupid things on wheels that you walk around with with a no, I mean an actual segue ah. into the next section. Yeah, it's yeah. This is a, a something I've been thinking just for a while, and I don't know whether 
games are getting easier or people in the world are becoming better at games because there's so many games. The if first that makes one. any sense. Definitely the first one. Cool. All right, well, thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's... I'm going to use... Uh, obviously, the first example I'll use is the Pokemon games. I will use that as an example. Because at generation, I'm going to say around five... I, that's when I found the games to be most difficult mm-hmm. because the Elite Four was a challenge, the Dragon Master was ridiculous, and spoiler alert, if you're going to play a Gen 5 game, there you go, there's your chance, I'm going to talk about it now, um, in the Elite Four, you take on the Elite Four, and then when you go to take on the champion, the evil team of that region takes over the Elite Four, basically, and the Pokemon League. Mm-hmm. And a castle arises from the ground, and the evil leader basically defeats the champion, and then you have to beat all of the evil team, and then get to the evil team leader, and beat him. And he's got a legendary. Ah. That's a challenge in a game. Yeah. <laughs> Having to beat the Elite Four, and then you're thinking one battle away, and then all of a sudden you have to beat an entire castle of evil people, as well as a legendary at the end. Who are that is well developed, they're not just cannon fodder. Yeah, that's a challenge. Mm. However, <laughs> um, going into Generation 6 and 7, firstly, there was a, they introduced an item called the Experience Share, which they've always had. However, this time it's a key item, and you can turn it on or off, and it works similar to what it does in Let's Go, which means if you win a battle, all of your Pokemon get experience. Oh, okay, yeah. Rather than Generations 1 to 5, having to literally, if you want to train like a Magikarp, for example... Having to send it out first and then, and swap, then swap, yeah. They made it easier to do that, which is fine. However, what they had was an item that Pokemon could hold, so only that Pokemon got experience from the battle, as well as the one in battle. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Then they made it a key item, so everyone gets experience. Or if you turn that key item off, no one gets experience except the one in battle, which is fine. However. The games are made now so that you're meant to have the experience share on because if you don't have it on, it just gets ridiculous by about four gyms in and you're just like, right, well, you know, four of my Pokemon are level 20 and the next gym is level 35. I've got two that could do it. You know, it's that sort of thing. It's, oh, okay, yeah. If they these two, found a balance. If these two die, then I've got nothing to fight with. So I've yeah. got to level up absolutely everything and then yeah. it's far too easy because yeah, even Pokemon exactly I never right. use that I can just kind of whip out for this one gym because of, like, elemental um, weaknesses or whatever. Yeah. It can then wipe exactly the floor right. with them. Yeah, I mean, like, I could get a Magikarp at the start of a Generation 6 game, X or Y maybe, and by the time I get to the second or even third gym, it's a Gyarados level 24 and I haven't even used it, you know. Oh, that, that is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it's all right if you're, if you're only doing it to, like, complete a Pokedex. It's fine, because then everyone evolves quickly. But, yeah, that was an example of games, in my opinion, getting too quick, uh, getting too easy. Mm. I it It's kind of spreading to other places, kind of. Uh, I mean, for example, when games are remastered and they get a, re- a chance to readjust the controls, I've found that they're becoming... With um, controllers getting a lot just better, basically, mm. better responses, it's then making games easier. Cause, but then I think to myself, like, oh, when I was playing Crash Bandicoot as a 10-year-old, I was really good. When I play it now on exactly the same console with exactly the same controllers, I'm terrible. So am I just getting worse? Are you meaning <laughs> the old PS1 version as opposed yeah. to the re- remake exactly. one? Exactly. Yes, I am, yeah. So there's an argument for that. It's like, I, I it's suppose not that games are getting easier. It's just that the physical technology is getting better and more responsive. Yeah, you now would be used to a PlayStation Four controller as opposed to a yeah. PlayStation One controller. And although they are basically the same, they've been mapped out the same way. Yeah, yeah. as you say, the the actual technology inside is there's sort of a fifteen year gap. Yeah. So it's sort of like a three-way argument now. It's more like, are games getting easier? Are Is technology getting better and more responsive? Or are people getting better at games? Or a mix of some or all of those? I don't it's, think people are getting better at games, because I don't think they have to. 
okay. I do think ah, the easier. Right. I don't. Okay. I do think the easier thing is is definitely a thing. Um, yeah. I I only really need to refer to one game, and that's Final Fantasy Fifteen. It's virtually oh, really? impossible to die in that game. Oh really? Yeah. Is and, that the latest one? Yeah, that's the one that came oh, out okay. a couple of years ago. It's it's nearly impossible to die in that game, even just on normal version. However, you go back to Final Fantasy X. Yeah. Much more of a challenge. Much more, yeah. There's much more kind of super bosses as well, which have different stages. And you oh, kill right, yeah. one, and you go, cool, I've done it. And then immediately it ch- transforms into a stronger version of itself. And there's no kind yeah. of saving in between. It's like, nope, you're straight into the next one. <laughs> and they they kind of phase that sort of thing out. I mean, if you even play that on easiest mode, um, you actually can't die yeah. like when you die you immediately get revived oh right okay it, yeah it's actually physically impossible to die <laughs> that's quite annoying there's a few games like that now though wasn't there like if you die you don't go back a couple of i'm going to say stages i know yeah. not every game is you know what i mean like in or phases stages whatever you want to call it there's not there's still games that are like if you die you can carry on from just about this point yeah, some some implemented quite well in terms of like auto saving when you get into new sections. So yeah. that if you spend sort of ten or fifteen minutes in that section and then you end up dying, you've basically got to replay that entire section. I don't yeah. mind that so much, but the yeah. ones that basically boot you straight back in pretty much where you were when you died, there's no there's no need to be skillful then. Yeah, there's there's no need to learn kind of any skill set or any kind of uh, the mechanics to a certain level because yeah you're just going to pop back where you were anyway exactly i mean with a game like breath of the wild for example if you know how to not die if that makes sense if you've learned and you've got the skills and you've actually got the experience and everything like if you've got a fairy in your pocket yeah <laughs> When you die, it will give you four hearts back, and you won't die. You know, sort of, you can learn that. Mm. So it, that 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 game gives you a way to make it easier for yourself. That's but pretty standard, brutal at the beginning, though. That game. Oh, absolutely brutal. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> like for example, it's an open world game, and you're supposed to go right out of your resurrection shrine and talk to the old guy. Mm. But if you go left, there's a camp of three bad guys, and all you've got is a tree branch. You yeah. Know, it's, <laughs> and you've it's, got no idea really what any of the main mechanics are you've got no exactly, idea what their yeah. attacks are going to be you've got yeah. like what two or three hearts yeah three i think it is yeah yeah i mean that's what i mean a game like that you can make it as easy or as difficult as you want yeah but the good thing is to make it that much easier you've actually got to invest the time yeah exactly you've actually got to learn about the game yeah and really it doesn't just in. give it to you you can't just unlock now it's in super easy mode where you get all yeah. decent weapons and Nothing really hurts you, and oh look, here's a marker for all of everything to collect all the good things. You've actually yeah. got to go out and not grind because that's that sounds like it's a kind of a hardship. But you've actually got to invest the time. Yeah. To be rewarded. It's like Super Mario Odyssey for the Switch, it has an an assist mode, which basically means you can carry on as normal. It will have an arrow telling you where to go next mm-hmm. at all times, pretty much. But if you stand, like, say, you get three little lives, if that makes sense, like little uh, bits of health or whatever. If you stand still for long enough, it will just revive your health. It will just go right uh, to. Oh, yeah. Three. Health, health regen is, is evil, anyway. Yeah. I mean, there's some specific levels that have no, like, health recovery, and that's the point. So you're supposed to go through. And survive. Yeah. And it's a challenge. However, if you've got it on assist mode, all you need to do is walk around a corner, stand still for five seconds, and you've got full health. So it's... Yeah. I get that's a choice. That's not like an actual standard. That's not like this is the way you do it. So mm. health regen. A challenge. I've, I've never enjoyed anyway. That kind of ruined Metal Gear Solid Five for me, to be honest. Oh really? Yeah. Because as long as you just take cover for a little while. Yeah. He then goes, oh, I'm okay again now. You've literally just been riddled with bullets. And yeah. in any other versions of of that series, you'd be, like, one shot away from death. Oh, dear, oh. I don't have any kind of curative items at all. Um, right, I've got to be really clever as to how I get out of this now. 
Yeah. Bearing in mind they're bearing down on you, and the idea is to not get caught in a firefight because it's a stealth game and there's more of them than there are of you. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, no, it's okay. If you hide here for five seconds, you'll then be full health again. You can just go out and blast them. Yeah, which wouldn't happen in no. real life. I know it's not real or um, set in a real life world sort of thing. Mm. However, try and get a little bit of realism. Well, especially when older games in the series had that and you've removed it. Oh, right. Okay. You can kind that's of forgive a, yeah. it a little bit more if it's never been there and that's a kind of part of the series. And you're like, okay, well, that just comes as the territory with these games. But when yeah. it's a game that used to have that and they go, yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to do it this way because all the other games are doing it. Yeah. Like, well, I, I'm not playing those games for a reason. I'm playing your game because it's different. Don't make it yeah. the same as everybody else's game. Don't be a spanner. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that was yeah. That, well, that was basically all I had to say. Really, was our games getting easier? Because I think they are, but only certain factions or certain franchises. But generally, I think a lot more games are getting easier these days. Yes, definitely. And I'm not overly a fan of that. To be honest. No, it it it's a pain where you're having to kind of hand trying to intentionally handicap yourself in order yeah. to make a game more fun to play to kind of artificially add challenge back in by thinking, oh, I'm going to do this level by not doing this or I'm going to make sure that I I don't collect this thing just to make it harder for myself or I'm going to play it in such a way that I intentionally disadvantage myself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand a game like... Well, a franchise like Pokemon where it's aimed at adults and children is needs to have elements of being easy. I get that. However, <laughs> there is also a limit of to, of, of hand-holding. You need to sometimes just be like, mm. if you never give the youngsters a challenge, they'll never bloody learn. Exactly. If that makes exactly. any sense. We, we had to. Early, yeah, late got, 80s, early got, 90s yeah. games were nice and impossible. And then yeah. you get frustrated as a child. It's character yeah, building. Exactly. 2001... Playing Pokemon Gold, you get face against Lance and he's got three Dragonite, and you think, oh, for God's sake. Three? <laughs> yeah, you take out one, you think, I've done it. And then he brings another There's one another out, and you one. think, oh, for God's sake. And then he's yeah. got another one, and you think, oh, for... no. That's a challenge for <laughs> a 10-year-old. Yeah. When, you're, when you're literally limping over the line, that's yeah. the correct level, because it's achievable, but easily not achievable if you'd have just done a couple of things wrong. Yes. It, it's exactly a case of right. you've got to get everything precise in order yeah. to limp over the line successfully. Yes. <laughs> but oh well. Maybe it's just that me and you are getting better. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah, probably not. No, <laughs> definitely not. No, definitely I don't think, not. I, I don't think I'm better. <laughs> there are so so many gamers better than me. <laughs> yes. Because they all can of actually them... spend more time with yeah. it. Oh, oh well. Well, that was all I had to say, really. Yeah. Shout out to game developers. Make them more difficult. Yes. Or at least give a challenge mode or some sort of difficulty mode. Actually, that I think that is quite a good point. A lot of games do come with like almost one difficulty setting. Yeah. Now. Certainly on a first playthrough. Yeah, pretty much every game I've played has come... Well, I'd say pretty much. Pretty much every time I've come across a game that's got a difficulty mode is either play the game or play the game in easy mode. And then once you complete the game, you can unlock a challenge mode. And you're like, no, I want that from the start. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I, I kind of tend to get bored of the game by then. Just like, I don't yeah. really want to go through all that again. No, I don't want to go through all that again and have it be more difficult. I want it difficult from the start. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Needs a challenge mode in some games rather yeah. than an easy mode. Or both, I should say. Maybe that's something that you can employ in your game dev demo. Yes. <laughs> Is that something I can deploy? I, well, I, I'm not aware of it yet, but I've we only played see. it for a, a couple of in-game years. so. Well, we'll give it a go. That's probably going to be the first one I try. So. Yeah. It's good. Right. Yeah. Right then. Yeah. Well, we best get to editing this and getting it out for you guys. I was going to say, yeah, because we've, yeah. we've only got a few hours. If you're listening to this on the actual time of release, we did this approximately seven hours ago, so enjoy yourself. <laughs>
<laughs> this is us from seven year, uh, seven hours in the past. And and if you're not listening to to it, then don't enjoy yourself. Stop enjoying no, listening to stop our videos. Enjoying yourself and get back to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. All right, well, I shall see you around then. Yes, you probably will. I'll probably be sitting fairly close to you the next time we... Yeah, good point, actually. Very soon, anyway. Yeah, good point. All right. (laughs) (laughs) All right, well, I shall see you around. Yes, thank you, you everyone, for listening. Bye-bye, everyone. Goodbye.